Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. Raph Robinson on the keyboards, on the piano, that is, and it's our, he's our special guest tonight. Welcome, Raph. Thank you. The Raph is what it's short for? Raphael. Raphael. <laughs> I like it. Uh, tell me something. How was Pan Jazz this weekend? Was it's it good. Was good. it good for you? Yeah, it's good. Tell me, relive the night for me. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, this performance was special um, for me in the sense that I hadn't performed in Trinidad for about five, five years. So you know all that adrenaline and you know the friends and loved ones and things. You know you want to be good. For them? <laughs> yeah. Where are you based now, Raf? Uh, in a suitcase. <laughs> in a suitcase. <laughs> well, that, that means you've been doing a fair amount of traveling. Tell me, like, where have you been and where well, have you well, been performing? With the um, release of my um, album, Branches, <coughs> sorry, I, uh, the album was released in uh, April. And um, since then, like, I've been, you know, uh, over the States, uh, the Caribbean, and, uh, yeah, and Canada. But just, you know, like, I've, I've started doing um, radio and television promote, uh, promotions, like, in the, in the black colleges and, and basically anywhere, you know. Um, I'd go, like, um, because it's, it's an independent production. And um, I think that there's a lot of room for people, <coughs> sorry, with independent productions in the sense of um, Caribbean music. And um, I would go to, like, Washington, and contact um, radio stations and stuff like that. And invariably, I'll get interviews. I mean, you know, amazing. How have the sales gone? Sales has been going well. I mean, beyond, because, you know, in this time that we live, um, marketing is a very important aspect of, I mean, marketing an album costs more than recording it, you know? And um, this album, um, Branches, had no money to market it and it's you know it's doing well and more power to word them out you know <laughs> in this type of technology any plans for the future in terms of more material that you're going to have coming out oh yeah sure i mean that's why the mid branches are now getting started to climb i like the title of the <laughs> of the, of the yeah, um, album you know? so you have it in what record cd cassette no no not records i have it on um cd and uh, cassette i remember listening to it uh, you know during the Panorama J this year, we were hearing this music in the background. Everybody was asking, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> and I said, oh, I've got to get this CD. And I must uh, say that um, it's a fine piece of work. And I've had many hours of fine listening thank you, to the thank tunes you. on the CD. Thank you. We really worked hard on it. So what's it like coming back to Trinidad? Um, it's great. It's always great to come back to Trinidad. Trinidad is home, you know, I'm, and coming back to perform is even greater. Any new vibes, anything you've picked up that you're, is going to influence your work from here on? Um, well, I wouldn't know that, no. When I, when I, I go back, it, it will pop up. <laughs> well, you know, as Raf was preparing for the Pan Jazz Festival last Friday, we popped into the Queen's Hall and caught him rehearsing with the rest of his band. Most of his band has already gone back. We're going to have a surprise for you later in the program, so keep viewing. We take a commercial break, and when we come back, we chat with Raf up at the Queen's Hall during his rehearsals. <laughs>
Personal favorites, if I may say so, from your latest CD, and a good place for us to start this uh, conversation. Let's talk about the man Ralph Robertson, where his musical career began, and how did it develop into something professional? Well, my musical career is, incidentally, is a funny story, because um, I always had the um, the air for music. Always, I started playing, you know, because in those days in Trinidad, you know, we could get um, all the stations, the salsa from. Um, yeah, Venezuelan station, Latin America, Latin America, cha -cha -cha. yeah, everything, everything, right? So I would go on, you know, like, and you know, just try to, do. Um, and how I really got into music is that, you know, coming up in the church, my grandmother used to um, sing all the time. Mm -hmm. So there are two reasons I got into music. One is because after lunch on Sunday. Um, she would come and sit right by the piano. We had a piano at home, and she would want me to play um, Onward Christian Soul, yes, and I would play that, and stuff like that, and then she would give me money. And I used to control the whole Sunday matinee thing. And the second reason I got into music is for girls. Girls always like the pianos. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. It had nothing to do with music. Yeah. Yeah. I remember um, about four or five years ago, mm -hmm. You were doing some work with Ovid Alexis because you said you wanted to fine tune mm -hmm. your piano skills. And you know, this, this was amazing to me because I always looked at you as somebody who knew your music. And tell me a little bit about that experience. No, well, every, um, first to begin, um, music is one of those things that um, no one retires from. The reason that is that there's always something to learn. And I'm always mindful of the fact that um, there are stages, the stages. Um, most importantly, you have to agree with where you are before you move on. And um, the thing about it is that um, knowing that ego is the enemy of man, I always try to chuck my ego aside, and I can learn from anybody and everybody. And Ovid, um, he went to, to Berkeley for a while, and obviously there are things that he knew or that I didn't know. So, you know, I, I went and, uh, you know, sit with him and check out, you know. I learned from everybody, I learned from you. I learned from, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, because, I mean, when I watch your programs and stuff like that, you know, because music is, is one, it's just one thing, and everybody plays different parts and stuff like that. So, when I watch your program, like, I have a, um, a video of you singing a spoiler song. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Tell me something, though. Where would you say your professional career, in terms of the Kaiso Jazz idiom especially, began? Um, it began in Trinidad when I was a kid, coming up in music. You know why? You know why I said that? Because I always look for the most challenging calypsos to do. You know, people, basically, it, it always has been that people like the easier stuff easier stuff. Um, so obviously, you know, coming up in the combo time, you know, you will look for... You know, people want to hear something familiar. But I will always look to the songs that you can do something with and it's not easy to play. And Kitchener had those songs. So as far back as um, I can remember, while I'm... Um, take for instance, like a song, you know, because there's a misconception about Calypso, jazz, really, and thing. You know, I... Um, I cannot say this is Calypso jazz or this Calypso jazz, but I think what I think that um, it comes from the fact that um, our music um, has a lot of substance in it. And what I do is I use the same principles of um, jazz music to put in that. For instance, like if I take a tune like Maji. Now, as a pianist, you have a pianistic approach to it. So I would, um, you know. You know, fill up the spaces and stuff like that and make it, 
You know, like, you know. Give it some body. That's the whole foundation of the so jazz. And then we have guys now who write in music out of that, like Xander. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, and then Ray Holman. And Xander. <laughs> yeah, and Ray, if you look at, like, some of his stuff, you listen to the early style of stuff. I think you wrote this tune, right? You know, there's that... Pan on the move. Yeah, there's that, that um, you know. But I, think, I think what is the most interesting thing about Calypso Jazz is that it is neither one or the other. It is not strict calypso, in the true sense of the word calypso, yeah. and it's not um, jazz. So, and it's not a hybrid. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's a thing, you well, know. But you, give, give me a little taste of uh, what um, you consider to be authentic kaiso jazz. What I consider to be authentic kaiso jazz would be the song that we open with. Calypso melody. That's a calypso melody. But somebody will dance that. Let's say somebody put an iron tingling it, tingling it, somebody will dance that. But from the time you. I guess that's the serious part. Yeah. Jazz Festival in Trinidad here, now at this time for me, is a dream. It is a dream, you know, um, because it's something that I, I saw in my mind. And what is ironic, last time when I dropped the guys, you know, from the airport and I was driving back up St. Joseph, it dawned on me that Queen's always in the dream. You know? It's the first time that the Panjas Festival is at Queen's Hall. Right, right, you know, and um, everything just worked. You know, I, I wanted to play in the Panjas Festival, but I, I wanted it to be, you know, because I deserve to play. Not because I'm from Trinidad and I'm son of the You're soil. giving your players it. Right? Yeah, I don't want that. I want that um, my music touch people. And people want to hear my music. That's what I don't want to know. Um, you know, because, you know, we have this thing that, um, because we are from here, we that we sh yeah, I, I don't agree with that. I what believe that it should be on merit. What tunes are you going to be actually playing? Um, I'm going to be playing some songs from the album, you know, and I'll be playing a couple of songs. Anytime I play, it's always a concept. It's always a concept. And um, my music and my life, are one and the same. When I get better as a person, my music get, gets better. What influenced some of the tunes that you chose on that particular CD? Kitchener? I don't know. The funny thing about the Kitchener CD is that I started to do it, and in the middle of it, it started to do it. Because I was gone, I was gone. You know, I mean, from the time, the first song I did was up. time um, that was the first song I did then you know and then it consumed me because there was nothing you know that you know I, I I didn't see anything else you know I didn't know that I could have that kind of focus mm -hmm. why the title branches because I believe that I am um, Kitchener music was the branches that I used to reach at my current um, musical level, you know, and, and, and it suggests 
I'm, I'm going, I'm going there, you know, not in terms of um, climbing, but going in, 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 in directions, you know. Um, if you notice the compliment of my band, I just looking at my band recently, and the guy over there, um, the, the other keyboard player to, to do some of the colors, because I don't play keyboard anymore, I just play piano. He's from Grenada, and I met him when he was a kid. The bass player is Jamaican heritage, but born in England and lives in Canada. He's never been to Jamaica. Yeah. And the drummer is Irish. Could you believe that I am playing in 1994? Calypso jazz with an Irish drummer? I mean, it's just... Weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, but, so uh, how, did, how did you all come together? Because this is, this is me. This is me. It is not um, a negative thing. Because I was on an interview recently in Miami, and the guy says, but you don't have any guys from Trinidad. Right? I said, well, it wasn't deliberate. But I'm always mindful that we in Trinidad, with our pan and our music, we want to be included in the world music. So you cannot want inclusion and practice exclusion. You have to embrace it. Yes, yes. And, and you know, the thing about it, Alvin, is, is you know, every time I come here, I see your program, I see things, you know, and I see the people, I focus on the people who are doing something. I mean, really, spoiler something. That was brilliant. You know, and, and this is what we have to do. You know, um, I, I am no person to give advice, or sorry, myself advice. But I think that, um, you know, we have to start letting other people in, you know, to, to, to get the music out there. And I always like to, um, you know, to teach guys the music. You know, this is Calypso because I believe in it. You know, so I always end up with, you know, um, the last time in New York, I had a, a guy from Bulgaria playing saxophone. And he got the rhythm. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's divine, you know. Because it's not easy, you know, we, we take it for granted. Pa, 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 that. That's not easy. That, that can't be written. Can't I see written. Earl Brooks is going to be working with you as oh, your yes. panelist. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, yeah. Um, when they um, contacted me, obviously, they um, asked about panelists and stuff like that. And I have panelists. I've played with all, all the, the guys who play, but from Robert Greenwich, um, Book Z, and the Narel, um, everybody. And Earl. And I have them in my mind. Like, Boogsy is inventive, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Robert? Is, 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 um, Robert is competent and clean and, and touch for these. Yeah. Brooks, he has um, a soft touch, you know what I mean? And, and he doesn't play fast and stuff like that. It's, you know, every, if you know, we like to get into this thing because everything about us is a contest. You know, yeah, better than. Competition. Right. But Since if you yeah. look at those guys carefully, you know, you will see that each one of them has something different that they bring to the, 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 the musical table. And that is nice because everybody not supposed to be, you know what I mean? And uh, Earl, well, you know, of course, Annie's is not here. I usually play with Annie's. <laughs>
How would you classify yourself as a musician? That's a hard one. I don't ever think about myself. In terms of music, I'm afraid. Um, classify. When is a classification in terms Somebody of... Somebody called you and said, what are you? In terms of music? Yes. Divine original. <laughs> <laughs> Calypso Showcase and we are live and we have a special surprise for you as one of our special guests also is the man Earl Brooks, the panist that we were talking about. And let's go over and chat a little bit with Earl. Earl, welcome to Calypso Showcase and welcome back to Trinidad as well. Oh yes, thank you very much. Tell me a little bit about your travels. I hear you've been to Japan. Yeah, well, it, it was a successful tour. It was beautiful. It's one of my fantasies. That one of our dream of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And so let me congratulate you too on your performance at the Pan Jazz Festival on Friday night with the Pan Caribe. Uh, that's a new name. Oh, yes, thank you. It, it is a branch from Lincoln the Prize. Yeah, so. Was that a group that was specially put together to go to on the Japan trip? Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, some of your original compositions, what did you all play on that night? Uh, I play my, the first one is I play three tunes, three choice which is Sunrise, uh, Latin Fiesta, and the last, the la new one that I did, Song of Steel. Tell me something, are we going to be seeing or hearing um, a CD or something, by old books um, in the near future? Oh yes, it will be soon. <laughs> it will be soon. <laughs> yes. I will certainly look forward to that. Well, on Saturday night, it was a, a real pleasure to see you worked together with Raf, and um, one of the tunes that stood out in my mind was uh, two of you all getting together to do Kitchener's Iron Man. You're going to give me a taste of that tonight? Oh, yeah. Sure. It, it is also nice working with Raf, too. You know? Well, let me just sit back and relax along with the viewers and let you all go and do what you all do best. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Kitchener's Iron Man. We take a commercial break and when we come back, you get a chance to chat with both of us. Welcome back to Calypso Showcase, live with Ralph Robertson and Earl Brooks. And gentlemen, I know that you didn't have much time to work with together, but how did you, how did you achieve that sort of a marriage on stage? Uh, tell me what went into the couple of days of rehearsal that you all had. Um, playing with Earl is very easy, you know, because brilliant pianist. It's, it's easy. You know, I don't have really no details or anything, you know, I just say, well, this is what I like, this is what I like, and easy. Easy guy, easy guy to get along with too. And Earl, how did you <laughs> fit in? Any problems? Well, to me, well, I go a little spiritual too, you know. That, you know, it reach out. What he's doing, what I doing, we just reach out and mesh. So we have that good communication. We have a good vibe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any thoughts about the Pan Jazz Festival as a whole? What it has achieved over the years? How it was today, where do you think it's going, and anything that you think is needed to improve it? Well, I think that um, in the Caribbean, even in America, um, jazz festivals now are incorporated in all other musics, you know, to attract people to it. Because <coughs> probably, you know, um, the idea of just straight ahead or regular jazz people. Is, is not really going, might not be able to, to attract the people. I always loved Kitchener's melodies. I was attracted to the melodies. And as time go along, you know, the more that I learn, it's, it's like a, a boomerang effect. You know, I learn something from it and then I come back to it. And it has always influenced me. I, do, I don't know why. I mean, I could, uh, what branches do, did too is that because of the research that I had to do now, I think that I know the most Kitchener songs. I mean, <laughs> quietly, I mean, I'm yeah, not yeah. gonna vote. You can get argument eh? on that. Yeah. And Earl, you have played on a lot of Kitchener tunes. You have ramaged at the end yeah. of the tune. You've yeah. chosen them for panorama pieces. What do you think about Kitchener's music in general? Well, Kitchener music, it, it gives you wideness to work. It's chords switching into it's different. It works, it works. Yeah, it works. It's different. Yeah. If you had to choose one of your favorites, what, what, what would it be? <laughs> a minor. <laughs> Pan in a minor. Well, I'm going to make yeah. sure that you close the show with that tonight. I think that sometimes, you know, we wait until people are not there to, to, to um, uh, give them appreciation. And I would just like to, to say that I, one of the reasons <clears throat> that I'm able to do what I do is because I have parents and family you know, I come from a very close family, close-knit family. Mm -hmm. And um, their unconditional love and support is what has kept me going. And I just want to tell them that, you know, that I really love them. You know, I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's important. Ralph Robinson on the piano, Earl Brooks on the pan, giving us Kitchener's 
immortal, Pan in A minor.